salutations everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is John Campia and this is a special editorial open discussion video about a fairly big issue that came up during Comic-Con. Now, so just as I was getting to Comic-Con, this big, huge bombshell drops about James Gunn, about some things he may or may not have said, about things he posted on social media, and of course, that Disney has removed James Gunn from Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Now, where all this comes from, of course, is the fact that it got discovered that James Gunn actually put up a series of tweets and social media posts with completely horrible, stupid, and offensive jokes. I mean, th there's just no way to get around it. Horrible, stupid, and of course, offensive jokes that he decided to tell thinking he was, yuck, yuck, a funny guy. When in actuality, uh, James Gunn was actually somebody who, for a period of time, was infected with a condition known as IMM. And IMM is a serious condition. It's also known as idiot moron mouth. So for a period of time, it appears that James Gunn was infected with a little disease known as idiot moron mouth and put a lot of really idiotic, stupid, pathetic jokes online and on social media that pertain to things like pedophilia, rape, and all that kind of stuff. Again, suffering from IMM, something that I'm sure all of us suffer from, from, from time to time. Some of us suffer from it more than others. James Gunn suffered from it quite a bit. Now, this is kind of ironic. I've had a lot of you guys tweeting me graphics of this, is that not so long ago, James Gunn and I had a little internet debate about free speech, about how much should somebody be censured for just expressing an opinion, blah, blah, blah. And a lot of you guys have been sending me this graphic that basically highlights kind of the debate where it's, where I write, but you know, the spirit of free speech dictates that the power of the majority should not by organized force silent the minority, uh, to which James Gunn replied, I don't understand. So NBC has an obligation to give every individual TV platform. No one is being silenced, simply fired and blah, blah, blah. And by the way, I should kind of point out here, I don't necessarily disagree with James Gunn's statement either, but a lot of you guys have been sending me this. So I've had a lot of you guys asking me what my thoughts and opinions are on this whole James Gunn situation. And I've been thinking about it a lot the last couple of days. Now, let me say right up front, number one, I am a fan of James Gunn as a filmmaker. I think the dude's a really good filmmaker. Slither, I think is one of the most underrated films of all time. I loved what he's done with Guardians of the Galaxy. He's come into my studio before. I've sat down and spoken with him. I'm a fan of James Gunn. I'll just say that right off the top. I'm also a fan of a lot of what Disney does. You guys know I like what they do with Pixar, with Star Wars, with Marvel, whatever. I'm a fan of Disney and I'm a fan of Alan Horn. We're going to talk about Alan Horn here in just a little bit. But in the light of all this situation and these old things that I guess he wrote up almost 10 years ago that came up, Alan Horn put out the following statement. And that statement was this, the offensive attitudes and statements discovered discovered? We'll talk about that in a second. The offensive attitudes and statements discovered on James's Twitter feed are indefensible and inconsistent with our studio's values, and we have severed our business relationship with him. So there's the situation we're at. We'll talk a little bit more about Alan Horn and some of the issues I have with his statement in just a bit. But before we get into it, I want to hear from you guys about what do you make of this whole situation? What do you make of this? Do you think it was the right thing or the wrong thing for Disney to let James Gunn go? Now, I want to bring up some points here that I think are valid on both sides and I think have to be considered, all right, as we get into the discussion. And I want all of you guys, I don't care which side of this debate you fall on, the yes, they should have fired him, the no, they shouldn't. I want you to take these points really seriously and at least take them into consideration, all right? All right, let's go on. We're going to talk about things from Disney's point of view for one. And the first thing I want to point out is this. Point number one, Disney needs to do what is best for Disney's business. All right, Disney needs to do what is best for Disney's business. I've seen some other commentators, or commentators I respect and like very much. I've seen some other commentators in the last couple of days saying things like, Disney should grow some balls and stand up and just keep James Gunn on. And, and I understand the sentiment. I do. I understand that sentiment. But we talk about this all the time. At the end of the day, Disney is a business. And Disney needs to do what is best for their business. And if they are in a position where having a certain filmmaker on could be, let's say, damaging to their business, 
then Disney has a responsibility to themselves, to their shareholders, to their general public. Disney has a responsibility to do what is best for business. They just do. So if Disney, in their evaluation of the situation, believes that continuing to have James on, whether they love him or not, if they believe that continuing to have James Gunn on, I think you and I would agree then that becomes an issue that is bad for business. And if they decide that it is in our best interests and in the best interests of our business to separate ourselves from this individual, well, then that's what they got to do. Now, maybe you agree that having him there is good or bad for business. That's different. But I think what most of us can agree is this. If you are a business and your number one concern is doing what is right for your company and your brand and your image and your business, if you believe that having somebody associated with you is bad or is counterproductive to those things, then you kind of have a responsibility to separate yourself from that. And that's what they've done. So on that level, I think most people, we need to at least acknowledge that Disney was simply doing what is best for business. All right. The second thing I want to point out here is this. And that second point is people being offended is more than understandable. I've heard some people in the last number of days saying things like, oh my gosh, why are people getting offended at this? This is just words. This is just jokes, whatever. The, the people are being ridiculous for being offended by it. And I want to say, hold on a second here. This is completely understandable that some people would be offended by this. It's completely understandable. When you look at the content of what James wrote, there is some very offensive stuff in there. This isn't like a thing saying, eh, you know what? I'm not a big fan of Avengers. <gasps> I'm offended by that because I'm an Avengers. Like that's ridiculous. But this situation is not ridiculous. The things that James said are offensive. I'm sorry, whether or not you find them offensive or not is irrelevant. It is completely understandable that there are people out there who would be hurt and be offended by what James wrote. And I think that's something that everybody just needs to understand here, that it is completely understandable that there are those who felt hurt and expressed hurt and who felt offended and have expressed the fact that they've been offended by these words. This isn't some minor little thing. Oh, he said he liked this instead of this. Oh, you shouldn't be offended by that. I get that. But these are things that are worth being offended over. Like, look, I can come in and say, hey, your mother's a big fat whore. Well, you're going to be offended by that. Of course you are. You can say, oh, those are just words where you shouldn't be offended. Come on, lighten up. No, 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 no. What I just said about your mom was offensive and you were offended and you were hurt by it. So let's understand first, Disney has to do what is best for their business. Number two, the things that James said were offensive and were hurtful to certain people. And we need to understand that those people are not being ridiculous for being hurt or offended by them. All right, here's my third point from Disney's point of view. The fact that Gunn was joking does not make it better. Now, I've heard some people in recent days saying, oh, come on, guys, look, clearly James Gunn was joking. He was not being serious. He does not believe those things. It's clear that he was joking. And guess what? I agree with you. I do. It's clear that James Gunn was joking. He did not mean those things, obviously. Even the way he wrote them makes it clear that he wasn't being, he was not being serious. He does not believe those things. He was just being edgy. He was just trying to be, in his own words, you know, provocative and all that kind of stuff. I get that. I agree with you. But guess what? The fact that he was joking does not make it better. I mean, it could have been worse, yes. But the fact that he was joking, the fact that he was just trying to be provocative, the fact that he was just trying to be edgy in his humor and all that kind of stuff, I get that. But it doesn't make it better. Let's go back to the thing about your mom being a slutty whore. Okay, I can come in and say, hey, yo, your mom's a slutty whore. Aha, uh -huh, just joking. Okay, maybe I was just joking. Maybe I was just joking, but I just called your mom a slutty whore. How are you going to feel? You ain't going to feel too good. As a matter of fact, I anticipate you planning on putting your knuckles on my chin fairly quickly and nobody would blame you for that. Maybe I was joking. Maybe if you look back at our history, I actually like your mom and your mom and I get along, blah, blah, blah. But that doesn't change anything. I come in and say, your mom's a slutty whore. Boom. You're taking a swing. 
And I wouldn't be able to blame you for it, and nobody would be able to blame you for it. So from Disney's point of view, I think the couple things we all need to keep in mind here is, number one, Disney needs to do what is best for Disney's business. We have to understand that and, and, and accept that. Number two, people being offended by James Gunn's comments is more than understandable. This isn't some people just being silly by being, no, what James Gunn said was idiot moron mouth. It was stupid, it was hurtful, and it was offensive. Three, the fact that Gunn was joking doesn't actually make it any better. Like I walked up to you and say, your mom's a slutty whore. And you start getting mad. Oh, wait a minute. Calm down, dude. I'm just joking. You're still going to be mad and you're still going to be hurt and you're still going to be offended. And of course you are. It's obviously you would be. So there's some things that I would like us to keep in mind on that side. Okay. Let's jump to the other side for a second. I think these are other points that I think we need to give equal weight to those points I just made about Disney's position. Let's look at it from James Gunn's or the James Gunn's camp point of view for a second here, okay? I also want to make three points. The first point I want to make from James Gunn's position is this. These posts were always public. These weren't some dirty little secret that were simply suddenly discovered. This to me is one of the big head scratchers of this entire situation. These are posts that James Gunn made publicly, open, out in the open. These were not hidden away. These weren't some dirty little secrets. These have been public social media statements that have been out for public consumption for nearly a decade. The fact that some people are treating this like some dirty secret that James Gunn hid and buried in his backyard and oh, now they're suddenly coming to light. <gasps> oh my goodness. These were public posts made public 10 years ago and now we're making an issue out of it. Th that, I have to admit, is a little bit of a head scratcher to me. The fact that these have been open public statements and now we're starting to make an issue out of it. And, and that's questionable. It's like this. Let's take Robert Downey Jr., okay? Robert Downey Jr., in his past, has acted like an animal on some sets of some place that he was. Partially a lot to do with his drug addiction and his drug abuse and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so let's take the example of Ally McBeal. He goes, he gets a second chance at his career on Ally McBeal. They make him an integral part of the show, and then his behavior on set his continued drug abuse that, uh, that came up again, it forced the studio to write him out of the show, probably cost them millions in having to reorganize the entire way and all their plans and the direction their show was going in and all that kind of stuff. Do you think Disney today, that was all open public, it's in the news, everybody knows about it. To me, this is the equivalent of Disney today going, we just discovered that Robert Downey Jr. can be disruptive and abusive on set. He can abuse drugs and he can act in such a self-destructive way that it may change us to have to cancel movies that he's in, may cost us millions. To which we would reply, yeah, but that you knew that. Like, you knew that before. This isn't new news. You've known about that and you decided to take a chance on him when you put him in Iron Man 1. This isn't brand new news. That's the part that kind of confuses me about this a little bit, is that all these things that James Gunn wrote and all that kind of stuff, these are things that he wrote about almost a decade ago and apologized for these things years ago already. This wasn't some secret that got unearthed. This isn't some dirty little thing he had hidden away and he kind of tried to keep out of the public eye. This was publicly done 10 years ago, and now we're making an issue out of it? And I'll get to what Alan Horn said about that in just a minute. All right, let's look at another point from James Gunn's uh, t you know, perspective. Number one, the posts were always public and they weren't discovered. Number two, it's not like Disney has never acted offensively before, right? I mean, come on. It's not like Walt Disney as a company has never done, said, or presented on scre screen incredibly offensive hurtful, idiotic, racist, moronic, painful, absolutely idiotic things and ways they've de depicted people and people groups and all that kind of stuff before, right? It ain't like Disney ain't guilty of this before, <laughs> this kind of stuff, right? There's something that's a little bit hypocritical to me about Disney wanting to say, what, wait, we found out 10 years ago, you did something openly and publicly, so why we're saying we're just finding out about it now is beyond me. Well, we would never do something like that. Really, Disney? Really? 
It's not like you've never done stuff in the past before that you as a company have not regretted and tried to move on from. It seems to me like James Gunn's just in that same kind of place. Which brings us to the third point from the James Gunn's point of view is this. As a society, we want people to learn from their mistakes, to grow, and to change as a result of them. And James Gunn did that. This to me is one of the most important points out of all six of these points. Look, did James Gunn suffer from idiot moron mouth? Obviously he did. Did he say things that were offensive and hurtful and wrong? Absolutely he did. That being said, he apologized for those things years ago. And he himself looked at what he said and did and went, you know what? That's not it. The James Gunn himself said to himself years ago, that's not smart. That's hurtful. That's offensive. This is going to negatively affect people. I shouldn't act like this. And James Gunn decided to stop acting like that. Isn't that what we want people to do? James Gunn himself looked at his own tweets and his own social media posts before, publicly apologized for them before. This isn't new. He has apologized for these before. And he looked at them and he said, this is stupid. I don't want to act like this. I don't want to look stupid like the way I'm making myself look stupid by writing these idiotic, hurtful things. I'm going to stop. And he did. He stopped. He looked at his mistake. He learned from his mistake and said, you know what? I, I shouldn't do this. I shouldn't write things like this. Yeah, they're jokes. Yeah, they're just putting out words on social media, but these are hurtful and these are offensive and I don't want to be that. And so I'm going to stop. And he stopped. What else can we as a society ask from people who are engaging with our society from an entertainment level? People are going to say stupid things. People are going to be dumb sometimes. But the question is, what do you do about it? Well, in James Gunn's case, he looked at what he was doing, being the idiot that he was being, and went, you know what? This is hurtful, offensive, and wrong. I don't want to be that. And I don't want to do these things anymore. And I'm going to change from that. And he did years ago. So let me just kind of recap here uh, again, some of the points that I was making here. Okay. Point number one that I think we all need to keep in mind here is that Disney needs to do what is best for Disney's business. Secondly, people being offended by what James Gunn wrote and said is more than understandable and we shouldn't pretend like they shouldn't be hurt or offended. Next, the fact that James Gunn was joking does not make it better any more than me calling your mom a slutty whore and then going, just joking, makes it any less hurtful or offensive. Uh, from the other point of view, some points I think we need to keep in mind is that the posts were always public. These weren't suddenly dug up and discovered. These have always been publicly acknowledged things. And he's apologized for them years ago. Also, it's not like Disney has never acted offensively before. We could go into a big, long laundry list of this stuff. And also, look, as a society, we want people to learn from their mistakes, to grow, and to change as a result of them. And I believe that James Gunn has. I mean, that's obvious. He looked at that and said, that's stupid. Years ago, he said to himself, I'm not going to do that anymore because it's wrong and offensive and it's completely coming across the wrong way. I'm not going to do that anymore. And he didn't. So I just think, look, I'm not going to sit here and tell you guys what to think. But what I do want you to do is if you're of the position that Disney is being stupid, they shouldn't fire him. I want you to consider those three points I mentioned from Disney's point of view, because I think those are legitimate points. For those of you from the point of view, yes, yes, J James Gunn is a demon, we should fire him, blah, blah, blah. I want you to at least consider those three points from James Gunn's position and those three points of view that I'm bringing up. That's all I can ask you guys to do. I'm not going to tell you what to think. I'm not going to tell you what your opinion should be. But I do think whichever side of this debate you fall on, I do think those are six points that you should consider in your thinking. Now, let me go to one other thing, and this is a part that concerns me. And that is how Disney, whether or not you believe they should have fired him or whether they shouldn't have. I have some concerns here with how Disney has conducted themselves in this, particularly Alan Horn, who I am a fan of. I, you guys know I am a fan of Alan Horn. Other than High Emperor Bob Iger himself, Alan Horn is the guy in charge of all of the Disney movie production stuff. And Alan, Alan Horn is a genius. I respect him a great deal. But let's look again for a second at these comments that Alan Horn made in response to the James Gunn situation. He said, 
The offensive attitudes and statements discovered on James Gunn's Twitter. First of all, discovered? Shut up, Alan. Uh, the, the offensive attitudes and statements discovered on James Twitter feed are indefensible and inconsistent with our studio's values. And we have severed our business relationship with him. Here's where I get concerned as a fan that I consider James or Alan Horns's statement here to at best be disingenuous and at worst reveal a complete incompetence. I am saying this as a fan of Disney and as an admirer of Alan Horn, but looking at this statement, it is either at best, you know, I want to be careful how I say this thing, but at best, it's disingenuous. At worst, it reveals a deep incomp incompetence. Well, Campia, what do you mean by that? Well, I mean it's disingenuous by this. He puts out that statement as if to say, oh, we just discovered this. <gasps> James Gunn wrote those things 10 years ago. We never knew lies. I'm going to tell you guys right now, that is a flat out lie. Look, let's put it this way. A number of years ago, when I was still running AMC and some other companies and stuff like that, right? When I was looking at bringing a new person on board, and remember, whenever I brought a new person on board, it was a painfully stressful situation because whatever person I was bringing on board, that person would become a reflection of what we were. So you're rolling the dice and you're taking a chance when you bring on a new team member. So I remember I got to the point when, and we're just like a little nothing YouTube outlet. But when I was bringing new people on board, one of the things, when we narrowed it down to some of the people I was seriously considering, one of the things I would do is I would look at social media history. And we were nobody. We were just like a little nothing YouTube channel. And I knew well enough that I needed to look at somebody's social media history to see if there's anything that might come back to bite us in the ass, anything that we should be concerned about and things like that. And I'll tell you right now, there were a couple of occasions when I had some people like in the final four or five that I was looking at, and I would find some really bad stuff on their social media in the past. I thought, you know, this could come back to hurt us. If I bring this particular person on board, I'm going to have to deal with this and this could come back and bite us in the ass and it raises some concerns for me. And you know what? It's not something I want to deal with. And one, I'm not going to throw anybody on the bus, but one person we did bring on, I'm not going to say who it was, but one person we did bring on, the last conversation I had to have with that person before making it official that we were bringing them on is saying, look, I discovered this on your social media. This could be a problem. Walk me through this. Talk to me about this because I'm putting myself in a position where this could come back to hurt us. I want to understand where you were coming from, where you're at now, blah, blah, blah. And this one person, we had a good, solid, serious, heart to heart discussion. And it ended with me being satisfied with what they said. And guess what? By me accepting their explanation of the situation, that means I'm holding myself now accountable for whatever fallback comes as a result of what they had put on social media before. It's now my responsibility because I know about something that they had written before. I sat down and became satisfied with their explanation and where they are now as a person and where they were, where they were then when they wrote it in the context that they wrote it. But by me going ahead and now hiring them, I am essentially saying as the leader, that I am taking responsibility for this person now. And if this ever comes up again, it's got to be on my shoulders. It's got to be on me. Don't tell me for a second that Alan Horn did not know about what James Gunn had written before. They were open and they were public. So don't come out here, Alan Horn, who I deeply respect, but don't come out here and say, oh my gosh, these tweets that we discovered, shut up, you're lying. That is a lie. You are lying to your fans. You are lying to the people who follow Disney. You are lying to the people who respect Disney. Do not be so disingenuous as passing yourself off as, oh my goodness, I'm so surprised. Ooh, I never knew any of this. You're either lying or you're a complete incompetent fool of an executive. And we all know you're not an incompetent fool and an executive. You're one of the smartest, brightest dudes in this business. So don't try to play the innocent ignorant card here. You knew about those tweets. 
Don't expect us to believe you're some moron, incompetent fool. You're not. You knew about him. Don't now play this ignorance card with us going, Oh, we never knew about this. Yes, you did. Because if some moron nobody from Canada can run some little YouTube outlet and be smart enough to know, hey, I need to look into somebody's social media background. I need to know what we're getting if we're bringing this person on. If an idiot like me knows to do that, your company knows to do that too. Don't play off this BS that you didn't know about it. At least come out and say something like this. You know, we at Disney are very concerned and we value the feelings and the outlook and the opinions of our viewers very, very much. The statements that have come now to a fresh light that James Gunn has made in the past has caused some real concern and pain amongst some people. As a result, we've had a discussion with James and we've decided it is in the best interest of our company and the Disney brand to part ways. If you had said something like that, that at least would have been sincere and genuine and not reeked of BS. Instead, and I, look, I'm not trying to change topics here. The topic is what James Gunn said. But I believe as a fan of Disney, and as all of us are fans of a lot of stuff that Disney does, I am very, very concerned at the disrespect that Alan Horn is now showing us, Disney's fans, by trying to pass off this BS and just believe, don't, don't worry about it, these people are all moron sheeps. They're all just moron little sheep. They'll just buy whatever BS I throw at them. Let's just say we didn't know about it and we're just discovering it now. Own up. Say, you know what? We talked with James before. We knew about this, but we felt comfortable that he has progressed a lot as a, as a person. And we decided, yes, he is now the type of person that we're comfortable working with. Own up to it. Take responsibility for it. Anyway, what he said completely pissed me off. And it should piss you off as well. But again, that shouldn't change whether you think Disney should have fired him or shouldn't have fired him. I believe there are good reasons on both sides. I absolutely do. I'm just saying as a fan of Disney, I am very concerned about the BS line that we hear coming from them at this point. Own up to it. Say, we knew about these tweets. We talked with James Gunn. We felt comfortable that he as a person has come a long way and has become the type of person that we want to work with. But now we understand that these these social media posts are coming to light again, that some people are felt hurt and offended by it. And we find that concerning and we want, we identify with our viewers and therefore we had a talk with James and we decided it was the best interest of the Disney company to part ways right now. If you had said something like that, I think a whole lot more of us, including me would have gone. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I can understand that. I buy that. I get that. This whole ignorant dove, who, me? We didn't know he said something like that before. Oh, we just discovered this. Bad James Gunn. BS. Absolute bullshit. And I'm calling them on it. That's bullshit. And I think Disney owes everybody an apology. Not, not for firing James Gunn, but I think every, they owe everybody for an apology for treating everybody like idiots. But anyway... That's just my point of view. Maybe you have a different point of view. So listen, I want to take some time now and go to your guys' thoughts and comments on this whole situation here uh, and see what they're going with. And look, I, look, I'm going to try to go through these quickly because I know we got a lot of stuff going on. And by the way, guys, I'm going to um, turn on my AC because it is sweltering hot in Burbank right now. So I'm going to get some AC going for you. You're going to hear a little bit of wind in the background. My apologies for that. But it is absolutely unavoidable right now. So... Let's go on and get to you guys and see what you guys are saying about stuff like this. Uh, Zombatron5678 said the following. Uh, I believe the punishment for Gunn should have happened by never hiring him. But cast and crew have said Marvel changed him and it was so long ago. Well, I mean, I I'm with you. I'm thinking, look, if you're a company and you can't live with what something and, some something and some words somebody has said and done in their past then your action should be, then we are not going to work with them. Clearly, Disney felt comfortable with where James Gunn, Gunn has come to as an individual to feel like, yes, we can work with him. And I just think they need to own up to that. I'm not saying that means they should have or should not have fired him, but you're right. I think really the main action here should have been, we just didn't hire him in the first place. But anyway, that's just us. Uh, Zomtron follows it up. In other words, he shouldn't be punished now. I believe that's up for debate. Like I, again, 
I think the firing of James Gunn isn't just about punishing James Gunn. It's, it needs to be understood that Disney is just doing what is best for Disney. This may not be about punishing Gunn. It may just be about Disney doing what is best for them and to protect themselves. And that's what a business is responsible to do. So again, I'm not jumping up and down here saying, Disney shouldn't have fired James Gunn. I'm saying, I get it. I do. Gunn's past actions have put Disney in an awkward position. And Disney has decided that the best thing for them to do to protect their own brand and to do what is best for them is to part ways with them. It's not necessarily about punishing James Gunn. And that's just the way I see it at any rate. Uh, next up, Miles Pardo writes, Reality is Iger has a business and an IP to protect. I absolutely agree. Uh, I absolutely agree. My only gripe with the whole um, Alan Horn statement isn't that they fired Gunn. It's just that I, I found it to be a very disingenuous statement that kind of wanted to pretend like they didn't know and like, oh, innocent little us. No, no, take responsibility. Say, yeah, we knew about the tweets. Everybody knew about the tweets. They were public. And we were comfortable after talking with James Gunn that he has grown enough as a person that we felt comfortable working with the person he is today. And we understand that this has offended a lot of you guys, so we're going to part ways with James now over this. But, you know, that's on us. We take responsibility for that. That's what Disney should have said. But I agree. Iger has an IP and a business to protect, and I completely appreciate that. I really do. Um, Alt Productions writes, uh, R.I.P. Um, John R.I.P. White Shores under a swift sunrise. We're not here to talk about anything else other than the James Gunn situation, but I will say, Alt Productions, I do appreciate your sentiments. Thank you very much. And we'll talk more about that on shows this week. Uh, let's see. Um, Dirk Walker writes, uh, generally, I don't think somebody should be fired for decade-old tweets, but there is a line. I think Gunn's tweets were bad enough to justify firing. Maybe not at another studio, but Disney, yeah. And again, I, I think it's a situation of, I don't think Disney is firing him for the tweets or for the social media posts. I think, that, because I believe 100%, you'll never convince me that they didn't know about them. They already knew about them. I think they're parting ways with him because they're now in a situation where there's going to be backlash and they need to separate themselves from him. I get it. I do. I, I, I do. I, I get it. But let's not make any mistakes. They're not firing James for the tweets because they knew about the tweets when they hired him. They're firing him for the reactions to the tweets. And there's some understandability to that, I believe. Anyway, next up, uh, Darth Impact writes, now, with the unfortunate firing of James Gunn, what are the plans for Guardians of the Galaxy 3, in your opinion? A lot of people have been talking about maybe Taika Waititi. That's a strong possibility. Uh, Taika Waititi is working on some other projects, but I'll be honest with you, I think he's working on one that I don't know is ever actually going to happen anyway. So that could be a direction they're going in is Taika Waititi. Uh, next up, Dirk Walker writes, if it was just one, I'm a pedophile, haha -ha joke tweet, I could overlook it. But after that many, I start to believe it. Well, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. It's ridiculous to say somebody joking about something, then I believe that person is actually that. That's nonsense. Were they still stupid? Yes. Were they still in poor taste? Yes. Were they still really strong symptoms of IMM, idiot, idiot moron mouth? Yes. But to say, wait, that guy joked about that. I believe he's actually that. I, I think that's silly. I'll be honest with you. I, I think that that line is completely ridiculous. But were they offensive? Yep. Were they hurtful to people? Yep. Was it stupid? Yep. You're damn right on all those fronts. Uh, all Productions writes, uh, get Taika to direct Guardians of the Galaxy 3 and include Korg. Well, you're going to have to explain where Korg went first from the beginning of Avengers Infinity War. But again, I, you're just adding to the course. There's a lot of people thinking that maybe Taika Waititi should direct uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 3 at this point. Uh, let's see. Uh, Peter Botel writes, Guess we are never finding out what that secret Easter egg was. I'm not really sure um, what it is we're talking about, to be honest, but it sounds like a, uh, it sounds like a predicament for sure. Uh, okay, sorry, we got a big jump here. Um... Let's see, where were we here? Oh, here we go. Um, Patrick Conway writes, I don't know, it was nine to six years ago. Yeah, it was a long time ago. And here's the thing. Uh, I think if it was almost 10 years ago and they were hidden 
and buried on some secret tape somewhere and some secret email that he sent to somebody, then I would say it doesn't matter if it was 10 years ago. The fact that it was 10 years ago, coupled with the fact that these were never hidden, these were never secret, these were publicly posted, and he also publicly apologized about them years and years and years and years, and years ago, that's the part that makes me a little bit iffy. It's not the fact that it was 10 years ago, or it was almost a decade ago. It was the fact that it was almost a decade ago, combined with the fact that these were open and public. Why are we talking about them now? Why don't we talk about them eight years ago? So that's the part that I'm personally a little bit iffy on myself. Uh, let's see. Uh, Snake Jerusalem writes, The gentleman that uncovered Gunn's tweets is a well-known, deranged scumbag, but by indulging his agenda, Disney proved to be even more despicable. Well, okay, yes, that is true. These were all brought up again by somebody with a very strong political agenda. We haven't talked about that here because I don't like to bring politics into it. But yes, it's true. The person who put all these things together and put them out and started making it a conversation again is somebody that had a very strong political agenda trying to discredit James Gunn's political position by trying to dis by discrediting James Gunn himself as a person. However, it's not like that guy wrote the tweets. It's not like that guy made it up. Yes, his motivations for gathering them together and putting them out were underhanded. Yes, but it's not like that guy made them up. It was James Gunn himself who wrote them. Therefore, nobody, nobody else is to blame for the repercussions of James Gunn's tweets than James Gunn himself. And I think James Gunn will be the first one to tell you that. Yes, the motives that this guy had were purely biased and political motives for doing that. Yes, but that doesn't change the fact that he's not the one who wrote them. James did. If James never wrote that stuff, none of this is an issue. But he did. He acknowledged it. He accepted responsibility for it. Um, and, and I think James Gunn would probably be the first one to say, yeah, that guy was kind of scummy for his motivations for doing that, but he's not the one who wrote them. I did, is what James would probably say. So we got to keep that in mind too. That, again, that's just my opinion. I might be wrong. You guys might agree. Uh, let's see. Um, next one is Lycon Zero who writes... Uh, you know Disney knew about those tweets beforehand. James Gunn has discussed them previously. Unfortunately, public opinion is everything in this business. And you know what? Public opinion is a major thing because Disney is in the business of getting the public to come to see their stuff. So public opinion and public image is very, very important. So I don't blame Disney for acting in what is their public best interest by separating themselves from James. I don't blame them for that. Where I get upset as a fan of Disney is how disingenuously they portray themselves as like, oh, we didn't know about any of this, guys. Oops. Shut up. Own up to it. Grow some balls. Be a man. Own up. Say, yeah, we did know about these things, but we were confident in James Gunn today. We were confident that he learned from that. He changed. He stopped doing that ridiculous nonsense. And we respected the guy he is today. And that's the guy we chose to work with. Own it. Don't try to lie to your fans like they've been doing. It's just, that's the part that bothers me. That's the part that bothers me, to be honest with you. All right. Uh, next up, Gabe A writes, I like to think uh, John, talking about John Schnepp, became one of the force. That's my view when someone passes away. Again, I'm going to have more words. Actually, Robert Meyer Burnett and I are probably going to do a video together just talking about our favorite uh, John Schnepp moments. But And we will talk about that a lot this week. But for this particular video, we're here to talk about the James Gunn situation. But I do appreciate your sentiments, Gabe. I do. We're just going to talk about that stuff more later. Next up, Kick It to the King Productions writes, Yes or no, DC will quickly pick up Gunn to direct. No, they will not. Not quickly. But I will not be surprised at all, not in the least, if at some point Warner Brothers realizes, hey, this dude is a great director. He made Disney a lot of money. A lot of people enjoy the films he makes. He changed from, he's not that same guy who wrote all that stuff years ago. Yes, we'll take a chance on him. It'll be risky, but I do think they will at some point. If, if James Gunn even wants to direct films anymore. I'm not even sure he's going to want to direct films anymore after this. But who knows? We'll have to wait and see. Uh, let's see. Vamp Aiden writes, It makes me sick 
it, oh, this makes me six. I agree the quote unquote jokes are disgusting, but people change. Disney must have done a background check on their staff, especially after all the events in the last year. Why act on it now? Well, look, first of all, Vamp, you know, I, like I've been saying, I completely agree with you. Disney knew about this before. They knew about this before they hired him. I hate the fact that like the, they're trying to pass it off as if they didn't. They did. And I wish that they would own it. However, I still understand where they're coming from. With the amount of public backlash and reaction to this stuff, you've got to do what's best for your business. And right now, having James Gunn be one of your directors is not smart for business. It's unfortunate. It's not a great situation. But I get it. I do. I get it. it because having him there can hurt Disney right now. And so you got to do what's best for your business and separate from it. Again, it just pisses me off that they're trying to act like the innocent little naive doves and they never knew about any of this and they're just discovering it now. It's, and that's complete and utter bullshit, to be honest with you. Uh, Michael Ashton writes, would I have fired him? No, but I think Disney did the right thing to keep uh, morals in line, especially after the Lassiter. And you know what, Michael? You just brought up an excellent point here. Disney is in the middle of a certain context. Not only with all the other stuff going on in Hollywood, but with them themselves as a company. Like, they're still dealing with the aftermath of the John Lasseter stuff, right? They don't want to have to drag this out. They don't want to have to have this compile on top of each other. They wanted to show the public, we will act quickly, we will act decisively, we will act swiftly. They wanted to show that. I get it. I understand. And you know what? I think I'm in your, your camp here. Would I have fired James Gunn? Probably not. Not understanding all the circumstances. Understanding all the circumstances, would I today, having known about the tweets before and having talked to him about the tweets before and having come to a place where I felt comfortable where he is as a person today and working with him now, would I have fired him now? No, I wouldn't have. But I understand why somebody else would. And I do get why Disney did. I do. I completely understand it. It's not what I would have done, but I get it. I do. And I don't condemn Disney for firing him because I understand they're acting in their own best interests. But uh, would I myself have done it? No, probably not. But I would have understand people being upset with me for not firing him. So yeah, it's, it's a tough situation. It is. Let's not pretend it's an easy one. Uh, Jose M. writes, James Gunn got James Gunn fired. End of story. And you know what? At the end of the day... That's actually true. As complicated as this situation is, it really does come down to, had James Gunn not written those things, we wouldn't be talking about this right now. At the end of the day, regardless of how you feel Disney should or should not have reacted, regardless about how you feel about the motivations of the people who put these things together and put them out again, regardless of any of that, at the end of the day, it was James who wrote the stuff and James who got James in trouble. It is. That doesn't mean Disney should have fired him. It doesn't mean they shouldn't have fired him. It just means that really there is one ultimate person to blame here for this. And, and that is James. And I think James has come out and publicly said that. I think James has acknowledged that. He's owned it. Um, so I, I think you're right. I completely agree with your sentiment. I do. And I think James Gunn ag uh, agrees with your sentiment as well. All right, Hannah Ringswald writes, Taika Waititi direct Guardians 3, maybe? Well, as we've been talking about, Hannah, it certainly, there are many worse choices you can make. Taika Waititi would do a great job directing a Guardians of the Galaxy 3. I know he gets along great with, um, with James Gunn. Uh, I think he would carry on James Gunn's vision. I think Taika would be a pretty damn good guy to direct it. But I also believe there are other directors who would be great at it too. Maybe they could put in Taika. He's already shown they can do the intergalactic stuff. All right, uh... Celerity9 writes, um, did you get a Funko Pops from SDCC? Yes, I did. I'll talk about those another time. We're here to talk about the James Gunn thing right now, but I will talk about those another time. Uh, Kevin Laniel writes, all of my condolences, John, as, as for the gun situation, this is most unfortunate, not only for Guardians 3, but for the future of the cosmic universe. First of all, Kevin, I appreciate um, your condolences and well wishes. Thank you for that. Um, getting back to the James Gunn thing, the MCU will be fine. They will get another great director plugged in. They will carry it on and move forward. 
um, they'll be fine. So I'm, I'm honestly not concerned about it. Like, it's not like Taika or James Gunn is the only guy who can do outer space stuff for the MCU. You know, in came Taika Waititi, and he did it well, too. So they, Kevin Feige will get another director involved, and they'll do great. And so that part, of, but it is an unfortunate situation. There's no way around that for sure. All right. Uh, next, Ben Hayusa writes, what a weekend it has been for us geeks. Shazam and most importantly, Aquaman. True, but we're not here to talk about that stuff right now. We're here to talk about the James Gunn thing. We'll talk about Shazam and Aquaman probably tomorrow on the John Campion Show. Uh, Holland Love writes, welcome back. Gunn had to go. There was no way Disney could have allowed him to stay, especially with the Fox vote pending. The Mouse House had to act. You know, I don't, it's, it's actually not a bad point you bring up, Hollett, about the Fox vote. That could be something in there, too. Not that the Fox shareholders care. Believe me when I tell you the Fox shareholders don't care about this at all. But maybe the government agencies do care. I mean, look, it shouldn't be a big issue, but maybe it would become. I think Disney did have a choice, but I do not blame them for the choice they made. I, I don't believe that Disney had no choice. They had to fire him. I don't believe that. But I do believe it's understandable that they made the choice they did. I wouldn't have, but I get why they did. I think they're being snakes about how they're explaining their position to, to, their, to the public, because I believe they're being disingenuous and lying. But I still, I get why they did it. I do. And, um, and yeah, so anyway, that's that. Uh, okay. Uh, Motar Roland writes, Hey, John, me and my wife found out on Friday we're expecting a boy. That's awesome. Our first kiddo. He's due November. Guess which day? That's right, December 21st. Well, again, we're here to talk about the James Gunn thing, but wow, December 21st just got even more packed. <laughs> like, we got eight big films coming out, and now you got a little one coming out, too. Congratulations on that, by the way. Um, okay, Holland writes, Sure, it was 10 years ago, but he was in his 40s. I think it's unlikely Disney knew and overlooked it. Had they known, I doubt they would have... No! <laughs> That's... Okay, hold it. My brother, my friend, my companion, my brother-in-arms of movie fandom. That's nonsense. That is nonsense. His statements were public and open, and he even apologized about them before. If I, a nobody loser from Canada, running some little YouTube channel and doing some simple just social media background check on potential employees... You're damn right Disney is too. If Disney did no background look into the people they're entrusting a $300 million investment on when you consider production and marketing and all that kind of stuff, if you think for a second that Disney, nah, let's not look into the guy's past. Let's not look into him. Let's just trust him with our $300 million investment and just believe everything will be okay. Don't believe that for a second. There is zero possibility that Disney didn't know about these. Zero. And if they didn't know about them, that's even more concerning because they, it means that Disney is run by a pack of blithering, idiot, incompetent fools. Yeah, let's just get somebody to, to entrust our $300 million investment in. Let's not look into them at all. Let's just believe everything will be okay. No way, my friend. No way. There is zero chance Disney didn't know about these already. If they didn't, then it speaks to their extreme incompetence. Extreme incompetence. And we know they're not incompetent. This is Alan Horn. This is Bob Iger. This is Kevin Feige. These are smart dudes who know how to protect their investment. And you're damn right they knew about these things. No way they didn't. The only other option... This is what we're left as, as fans. We're left with this. Either Disney knew about these tweets, or they are completely egregiously incompetent. We know they're not completely egregious. Look, I'm not a smarter executive than Alan Horner, Bob Iger, or Kevin Feige. Let's be clear about that. And if I know to look into people's backgrounds before bringing them onto some dinky little YouTube show, you're damn right they knew well enough before bringing in somebody to handle their multi-hundred millions of dollars investment. They just did. Um, okay, next one. Uh, drink with a Mexican. I love that name, right? Uh, what will happen if a video of Alan Horn comes out with him boxing a hooker and doing blow off her body? Would Disney get rid of him? Lots of people in the industry have bones in their closets. You're damn right they do. 
You're damn right they do. And the video you just suggested would be even worse than the James Gunn situation. And you're damn right, man. You're absolutely right. But he'd be gone. He'd be gone. Now look, saying that everybody has done something dumb and stupid, that's, no, that's not grounds for not acting. Like I said, I get why Disney did it. I do. That's no grounds for not acting. But Disney as a company themselves, like, I'm sorry, Disney, uh, Disney itself is a company that has done incredibly offensive, hurtful, racist things, but they learned from those things, they grew and developed as a company, and no longer do those things. That's what we want. James Gunn did the exact same thing. He did something stupid, idiotic, moronic. Of course, idiot moron mouth. He suffered from INM. Idiot moron mouth. But he grew. He realized what he did was stupid. He decided, I don't want to do that anymore. I'm going to stop writing that nonsense because it's stupid. It's not funny. It's not getting the reaction that I, was, I thought it would get. It's idiotic. It's dumb. It's hurtful. And I'm causing people pain. And I don't want to do that. So I'm going to stop. He just did what Disney did as a company. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it is him. He's the one who did it. So, and everybody's got their bones in their closet for sure. Uh, Jack Lupton just sends in a super chat. Thanks, Jack. Uh, Dark Sith writes, I'm very disappointed in James Gunn. I won't watch any of his films anymore. Well, I mean, that's for you to decide for yourself. That is for you to decide for yourself. And I'm not going to condemn you for it. They, what he tweeted, remember, these were tweets almost a decade ago. They were jokes. That doesn't take away the pain and the hurt from them, but he acknowledged himself that they were wrong and he chose to stop and chose to move on without doing that stuff anymore. For those reasons, I will still watch James Gunn's stuff because he acknowledged the problem himself. He, just, he chose on his own to do something about the problem and he chose not to be like that anymore because he realized this isn't funny and he moved on from it. For those reasons, I'll still watch him, but I will not condemn anybody, including you, who looks at what James Gunn wrote nearly 10 years ago and find it so hurtful and so offensive that you feel you can't watch his stuff anymore. I get it. I do. I get it. No judgment from me on that. I think you're perfectly within your rights to feel that way. I really do, and I think it's understandable. I personally don't feel that way, but you do, and I respect that. All right. Next up, Square Buzz HQ writes, Treasure Planet is a great film in your, your thoughts. Sorry, man, we're here to talk about the James Gunn stuff. Uh, I happen to like it, though. Uh, Devontae Brown writes, To point out, Gunn addressed this back in 2012. I love it, but there are some problems I have with Hollywood. Disney had to know this stuff before. Oh, there's no doubt, Devontae Brown, you're right. James Gunn himself brought this stuff back up five or six years ago. Five or six years ago, James Gunn himself brought it back up to address it and apologize for it and to say, I'm not doing that crap anymore. I've moved on. So Walt Disney Company is either blind, deaf, and dumb and egregiously incompetent, or they knew. I, I think, Devontae, I think you and I both know here. I think we agree. It, they knew. They absolutely knew and chose to work with him anyway. And as a result, they should take responsibility for their choice to work with him anyway. It doesn't mean I hate the decision they made to part ways with him. I wouldn't have done it, but I understand why they did, and I don't judge them for it. But I think they should take more responsibility for it. I really do. All right, Manuel Fernandez writes, Hey, John, hope you had a great San Diego Comic-Con. I did, as a matter of fact, Manuel. Thank you so much. While I condemn those tweets, I think James should have stayed. I didn't notice much of a backlash, not like Roseanne, and James has greatly evolved since. That is one of the things that gets me. These public jokes he made were almost 10 years ago and nobody said anything about them. Nobody said anything. Then he himself brings them up again in 2012, pointing out his own faults and saying, I don't want to do that anymore. I apologize. Those were stupid. That was dumb. I apologize. He owned up to it then. That was the time for outrage. Back when he tweeted them was the time for outrage. Why there's outrage now it's mostly political motivated, but there are people who never heard of it before. They're only hearing about it now. And I understand why some people would feel hurt and offended by it. I do. I think we all need to understand that. 
So I'm with you. I, I do. I agree with your assessment of this manual. I mean, it, this is something that came a long time ago. There wasn't any backlash at the time, and now there's backlash. But, you know, hey, it is what it is. And again, there's nobody to blame for this situation than James. James Gunn is the only one to blame for the situation. So, I mean, you know, it is what it is. Um, Anna Vargas writes, um, can we fire Disney for their racist past? I mean, there you go. I mean, Disney has a long history of racism, both in their production, their movies, and their founder, right? But what did Disney do? They learned from their mistakes. They grew as a company. They changed their identity. They changed what they're about. And now they are a company today that is very different from the company that they were. That is what we want our individuals. And that's what we want our companies to do. Learn from your mistakes, grow from them, change from them. Disney did that. James Gunn did that. And um, it is something we have to be aware of. I, I think it is. It's a good point, Anna. All right, next. Loki, God of Mischief, writes, um, His jokes were appalling, but honestly, someone went on a witch hunt to, to uncover this. I feel it was so abrupt. Like, wow. Oh, no doubt, Loki. You're absolutely right. Somebody, There was a witch hunt, and it was all politically motivated. This was politically motivated. Because James Gunn is a, is a very vocal, outspoken uh, critic of Donald Trump. The person behind this, self-admittedly, went on this as a political witch hunt. If you don't like what somebody's saying, try to discredit the person. You may not be able to discredit what they're saying, but let's try to at least um, discredit the person. That's what this was all about. And it worked. However, again, it doesn't change the fact that it's not like that dude made these things up. James Gunn wrote them. And that's why we're here. Not because somebody went on a witch hunt, and they did. They did go on a witch hunt. A, polit a totally politically motivated witch hunt. They did. But they're not the ones who made it up. It was James Gunn himself who wrote it. And therefore, all the responsibility lies with him. And I, again, I think he's, he'll be the first person to acknowledge that. I think he would be. Uh, all right, let's move on here. Uh, Casanova Frankenstein, one of the greatest cinematic villains of all time. Uh, do you think Disney would have reacted the same way had it been one of their A-list MCU actors instead of a relatively easily replaceable director? It's a very fair question, Casanova Frankenstein. I can't help but grin whenever I say that name. If you have not seen Mystery Men, watch it. Anyway, um, the answer to that question is yes, I still think they would have. Would they have done this three years ago? Maybe not. But we live in a different environment right now. And this is a Disney company that is still reeling from the after effects of having to deal with John Lasseter. Because of all that, yes. I, I honestly, I believe if it was Robert Downey Jr. again, who's had his own stuff of fuck ups in the, in, in the past. But if it was Robert Downey Jr., this was all coming out about right now. Yeah, I do believe. I really do believe they would have parted ways with them because of the high intensity pressure situation and environment that we're in right now, particularly Disney coming off the whole John Lasseter thing. If it was three years ago, maybe not. Today? Yeah, I think they would have today. It's a totally fair question to ask, but I think today, in today's environment and the situation Disney finds themselves in, yeah, I think they probably would have done it, even if it was Chris Pratt, uh, even if it was Scarlett Johansson, even if it was um, I, I, any of them, any of them. Honestly, I, I think today they would. All right, let's keep moving on here. Um, let's see, Regan H. writes, favorite Schnepp memory, are we bullying? Okay, I, to, I appreciate it, Regan, but we're not here to talk about Schnepp, which I appreciate that, we, that you want to. I'll be talking a lot about John Schnepp this week for sure, but right now, can't do it. Um, because we're here to talk about the James Gunn situation. Bobo Vasquez writes, I miss your tooth, John. Glad you made this video. Yep. And guess what? Uh, after Tuesday, they're, they're repairing my crown. Like I broke my tooth. You can see it's still there. It's just broken. I broke my tooth years ago in a class. They put a crown on it. Then the crown fell out a couple of weeks ago. My dental, uh, surgeon is only in the office two days a month. I wasn't available to come in to repair it until after Comic-Con. So Tuesday, Tuesday I'm going in, getting this repaired, finally. Uh, I miss my tooth too. Uh, Loki, God of Mischief, writes, uh, I agree with your statement now. I appreciate that, Loki. Thank you. And again, look, my statement, I'm just presenting my point of view. That doesn't mean I'm right. 
Doesn't mean you're wrong, doesn't mean you're right, and doesn't mean I'm wrong. It's just my point of view. The one thing that I will, the one thing out of this that I believe is fact is that Disney did know about this. That you can't convince me of otherwise. What Disney should or shouldn't have done, how they did or didn't handle it, that's all up for debate. And I'm just giving my opinion on those. But the one thing that I think is a fact is that Disney knew about this. I, you will never convince me otherwise that Disney didn't already know about this. Um, I do monologues right. So, Ron Howard for Guardians 3, well, why not? He stepped in and did a great job with Solo. Um, why not? Ron Howard is a great director. I'd be all for it. I know you're kind of joking, but he'd be another one. He's another uh, director that I think would be perfectly great. Let's put it this way. I think there's a lot of directors that could do it, but if I found out tomorrow that they got Ron Howard to come in and direct Guardians of the Galaxy 3, I'd be all for it. Okay, next up. Uh, Jake C. writes, How do you think Volume 3 will be without him? Or how good do you think Volume 3 will be without him? Oh, it's impossible to say. It's impossible to say. They may get in a director who's way better than James Gunn. They may get in a director who's just as good. They may get, bring in a director who's not as good. Maybe the script will be better. I mean, I, I don't know. It's impossible to say. It's absolutely impossible to say. What I am curious about is, are they still going to use James Gunn's script? Because I know he'd been written, writing Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Are they still going to use the script? I don't know. That's a very good question. I'll have to ask somebody about that to find out. But how will it be without him? It's impossible to say. It'll probably feel a little different with a different director. But it might be the best Guardians movie ever. It might be the worst MCU movie ever. We'll have to wait and see. Um, uh, Shriyas writes... You knew. You tell him, John. I agree. He, Alan, did know about the tweets. By the way, it's hilarious the way you imitate Disney. Oh, we just discovered. Well, look, and again, I have all the respect in the world for Disney. I have all the respect in the world. You guys have heard me talk about Alan Horn before. I talk about him very reverently. I think he's a terrific talent in this. He's probably one of the most gifted executives in all of the business. He's great. I respect him a great deal. But this line of bullshit he's trying to feed you is bullshit. It's BS. It's disingenuous, and it's treating the audience and the fans like they're a bunch of morons. And I'm really disappointed. I am disappointed in the way Alan Horn and the statement that he made. Come out, be a man, own up to it, acknowledge. We knew about these tweets, but we felt comfortable with how James has grown as a person, and we decided we could work with him. However, we also respect the feelings of our audience very much, and we are acknowledging that a lot of you people are feeling hurt and offended by his statements. As a result, we've spoken with James, and we've decided to part ways at this time. That would have been a perfect statement to make, and it would have let you keep your integrity. Instead, oh, we didn't know. Oh my, what James said, what? We never heard this. Bull. And I'm very disappointed in a company that I'm such a big fan of. I'm very disappointed in the way they've handled this. Very disappointed. Uh, it makes me question what I can believe that ever comes out of their mouths. It really does. I'm not saying we can't. I'm just saying it makes me wonder when they treat us like this. Anyway, uh, let's see. Uh, in, ooh, where'd it go? Um, do, do, do. Here we go. Uh, by the way, guys, if you have not sent in a super chat yet, please do not send in any more. Uh, I'm going to finish off the ones we have. The last one I'm going to do is Justin Brown. That's the last one I'm going to do. So please don't send in any more. But I will. You guys have sent in a bunch. I'm going to respect that. I'm going to fly through here and get through as many of these as I can at this point. Um, okay. In, in Rage Games writes, Patton Oswald made the same type of uh, pedo jokes as well as the guy who whistle blew on gun. Yeah, I mean, let's not... Look, everybody has said and done something stupid before. We've all said and, and done and written and tweeted or Facebooked something really stupid before. Maybe some more stupid, maybe some less stupid. That doesn't mean that a James Gunn shouldn't be held accountable for what he did, but let's all keep in mind as we start judging James Gunn that... We've all done and said stuff like this. The only difference is most people don't care who I am and most people don't care who you are, whereas everybody cares about who James Gunn is, right? So let's try to keep that in mind as we're evaluating how much we want to judge James Gunn. Let's just keep that in mind. All right, next up, Jordan Hurd writes, WBDC should pick up James Gunn. I don't disagree. I don't think they'll do it immediately, but I, think, uh, I, I don't think it would be a bad move to pick up a guy as talented as James Gunn. I really don't. Um, let's see. Ian Wendu writes, is this the same as the Roseanne situation? The difference, the, the big main difference between the Roseanne situation 
and the James Gunn situation, because I try to see some people very erroneously trying to compare the two, there is a massive difference. Had Roseanne wrote that tweet and nobody had any outrage about it, and then Roseanne herself put out another tweet a few days later and said, you know what, I wrote this the other day and it was insensitive, it was wrong, I was just thinking I was being edgy and funny, but I'm reading it and I'm realizing, no, that's just idiotic. Guys, I'm not going to write anything like that again because that was stupid and I'm not going to do that anymore. That's the difference between her situation and James Gunn. James Gunn's situation was, it happened years ago, nobody reacted to what he said, but he himself then himself called himself out, came out, publicly apologized for the statements and said, I don't want to be that anymore. I'm going to move on. And then he did. And for years, he's never written anything like that. That's the difference between that and the Roseanne situation. Roseanne's situation, she just said it now and got called out on it now. So to try to compare the Roseanne situation to the James Gunn situation is just as disingenuous as Alan Horn trying to pretend like Disney didn't know. It's just as disingenuous as Horn pretending that he didn't know. So it's, it's, it's a bad example. It's a very bad. So no, I don't think this is at, at all similar to the Roseanne situation. Uh, Brian Crockett writes, I see it from both angles, but I ultimately don't sympathize with Disney here. I, again, I, 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 it really, we're all going to come on different sides here. We're all going to come to a slightly different point of view. I have a little bit of sympathy for Disney here, even though I completely believe they knew about it. I understand that this is a part of the business. And if being associated with James Gunn right now is hurtful to your business, then you got to do something about it. I wouldn't have. If I was in Bob Iger's shoes, I would have kept James Gunn on and would have said to the public, we've known about this the whole time. You all have known about it this whole time because it was public. But we feel confident in James as a person. We spoke with him. We feel he's grown as a person, blah, 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 blah. But at the same time, that's what I would have done. But I completely do get where Disney's coming from at the same time. Uh, but uh, totally, resp I can't condemn, I, I can't judge where you're coming from, Brian, either, because I think there's a, there's a very valid argument to be made for what you're saying. Uh, Mark Nava writes, I understand the reasoning behind the firing. However, I can't help but think Marvel just lost a creative genius. Oh, I agree. But I think they know that. I think they know that. But I think the fact that James is a creative genius, and I love James Gunn as a filmmaker. I think they still, that doesn't change the fact that right now it would probably be bad for business to have him on. Uh, so I agree with you. They've lost creative genius. I think Marvel is well aware of that. Um, but at the end of the day, that doesn't change the fact that they were in a tough position for their business. All right, next up, uh, Warrington Train Spotter writes, do you think James Gunn was fired because Disney was afraid of the media backlash? Oh, 100%. 100%. Well, not just the media backlash, but the, the public backlash as well. These are not flattering things that James Gunn wrote. They're really bad. It is 100% Warrington. 100%. Like, you're bang on the target here. It is 100%. Not just the media backlash, but the public backlash. More importantly, because of the public backlash. But backlash is absolutely why they did this. And I believe it's understandable that they took that action. Maybe some of you don't, and I can see where you're coming from too, but it's 100% it's that's the reason why. Uh, Alex James writes, Taika wouldn't take the Guardians of the Galaxy 3 job in this manner. Oh, he would. He would if, if Disney said, hey, look, we're in a really difficult spot. We need this for the health of it. I think he would, and I think James Gunn would bless it. Uh, James Gunn and Taika Waititi get along. I think James Gunn, if anything, I think James Gunn, if anybody's going to step in and direct it, I think James Gunn, I'm just speculating here, but I would think James Gunn would want Taika Waititi to do it. Because I think he trusts Taika Waititi. Guardians is kind of his baby. And I think he'd want somebody in there that he trusts and he, who he knows would kind of respect his vision at the same time. So I, I really do believe Taika would do it. I really do. I think he would. Uh, but maybe I'm wrong. Uh, Pets of Ruin writes, Directors get off social media. Just make movies, please. I mean, look, honestly, I have considered... Because I am a very, very minor, 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 lower, 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 lower public figure. And I've, me and Anne have talked before about maybe I should just not be on social media. Because, like, what if one day I just write something just the wrong way? 
Like I'm trying to say one thing, but it comes across another way and boom, before you know it, I'm embroiled in some kind of big controversy, right? Like I've thought about that. Um, I think, here's what I think. I think directors and actors should have a PR person and most of them do. Most of them have publicists and all of them should run all of their tweets and social media posts through their publicists. I honestly believe that's what they, and I know some directors and actors do that. I know an actor in particular that when they write a tweet, they don't write it on Twitter. They write their tweet in an email to their publicist. The publicist then reads it and then will post it. But if the publicist thinks this could be iffy, he writes it back to the actor and then they change it or they just delete it. I think every actor and every director should run all their social media through their publicists just to make sure you don't do something really dumb. Now, this was James Gunn almost 10 years ago. He wasn't the James Gunn we know today, right? He wasn't the big famous director back then that he was now. So that doesn't really change anything. But moving forward, this is, I believe, a lesson for all directors. Use a publicist for this stuff, man. Use a publicist. Okay, uh, let's see. Daniel Dwyer writes, uh, rest in peace, John Schnepp. He was a true hero. He absolutely was. Uh, Joe Clem 15 writes, when people become high profile, I'm surprised they don't go back and delete their prior account. Like how you do, like how do you just figure those tweets won't come back? See, personally, I was talking about this with somebody. I think deleting them is almost like saying, I'm pretending that didn't happen. I believe if you wrote it, if you said it, you leave it up and you own up to it. Don't try to hide them. Don't try to act sneaky. Don't try to brush them under the rug. Say, nah, man, I wrote that. They were stupid. They were dumb. It was idiotic. And I've changed as a person, but I'm not going to pretend like I didn't write them. I'm going to own up to it. That is what I wrote. And I should leave them up there as an abject lesson for everybody else to see that we shouldn't do it. So personally, I like the fact that they don't try to pretend and try to rewrite history and try to sweep something under the rug. Um, because to me, this whole situation would be worse if James Gunn had deleted all those tweets and somebody else uncovered them. To me, that makes it even worse. Uh, and maybe I'm wrong. Uh, maybe I'm completely alone on that. But to me, there's something about that that makes it worse. The fact that, hey guys, this has been open and in the public forever. I never hid them. I never swept them under the rug. I never tried to pretend like it didn't happen. I own up to them. That's what I said. That's what I did. And I own up to it. And I man up to it. To me, that's better. But that's just my opinion. I might be completely wrong on that. Uh, let's see. Hall of Love writes, if Disney didn't know, they're complacent. Um, if Disney did know and didn't at least have him delete it, they're fucking stupid. A bad look either way. See, I, I, I get where you're coming from, Holland. I do. And, and, I, and I, I empathize with it. I do. Again, I feel a little bit different. Um, I feel like they knew. They absolutely knew. And I also, again, maybe it's just me. I believe in if you're really sorry about it, if you're really saying you've changed from it, then you don't try to hide it. But that's just the way I feel. I, I, I might be completely wrong on that. And I accept that I may be completely wrong on that. Uh, let's see. Where did we get here? Um, Black Rice. <laughs> what a great name. Rehire Gun. Volume 3 won't be the same without them. At this point, it's kind of impossible, I think, for them to do that. I don't think rehiring Gun at this point is, uh, is an option. Um, you know what, guys? Um, there are still a bunch of live questions in. But I have gone way over time and I have commitments that I need to go and get to. Actually, I've got people like literally physically waiting for me. I didn't think this would go anywhere past 45 minutes, but this is clearly a very hot topic for us to discuss about. I will do a part two of this video just answering the remaining questions. There's not a whole ton of them, but there are a bunch left over. I will get back to those. We've already gone on over an hour, over an hour um, and like an hour and 15 minutes already. So we need to cut this at this point. Look. I think the takeaway from this, though, is this. I think we need to accept that there are multiple points of view we need to accept and look at. I do think, again, let me just run back to these six points. I think all of us, regardless of what position you take, need to keep in mind and consider. We need to keep in mind and consider that, number one, Disney needs to do what is best for Disney's business. We have to accept that. Number two, people are being, being offended is more than understandable. This isn't some case of people just being silly by being offended. There were some very offensive things said. 
Next. Oops. Next. The fact that Gunn was, was joking doesn't make it better. Like, I could say, hey, your mom's a slutty whore. Doesn't matter that it's a joke. That is hurtful and offensive. I agree he was joking and everything, but that doesn't really make it okay. From the gun supporter's point of, uh, point of view, the posts were always public. These weren't some secrets that were just recently discovered. Number two, it's not like Disney's never acted offensively in the past. And number three, as a society, we want people to learn from their mistakes, to grow and change as a result of them. And that is exactly what James Gunn did. James Gunn owned up to it before. He's apologized more than five or six years ago about them before he, he looked at his own behavior. He said, this isn't acceptable. I don't want to be like this. I'm going to stop. And he did. That's what we want people to do. That's what I want my friends to do. That's what I want myself to do. That's what I want my neighbors to do. We all want that. And that's what he did. So wherever you fall on whether Disney should or shouldn't have fired gun, I think we should all just really take into consideration those six points. Anyway, guys, um, it is great to be back from San Diego Comic-Con. Tomorrow morning is the John Campus Show. Man, we got a lot of stuff to talk about. But what are your opinions? Maybe you're watching this video later. What are your opinions on this? How do you feel about what and how Disney sit, handled this situation? Should they have fired him? Should they not? What did you think about Alan Horn's statement? Were he as offended as me? Or do you think it was a perfectly good statement? Maybe you do. Jump down in the comment section. And let me know your thoughts. Be civil to one another, guys, as always. And again... Thank you so much for all your well wishes and outpouring of support to John Schnepp and uh, his friends and family. I appreciate it personally. I know everybody else does too. We'll talk more about John later on this week. For now, guys, that will do it for me. My name's John Campia, and until my next video, bye-bye.